Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. In today's episode, we will learn top 15 interview questions and answers on CSS3. In the previous video, we learned about top 10 questions on HTML5. This is a follow-up video of the interview question answer series. So this in this section, we'll cover CSS3. As always, you are free, you're feel free to drop in your comments or queries in the comment section and I'll be happy to help you. Let's take a look at top 15 interview question and answers on CSS3. To get the most, uh, ask me your queries and doubts in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep supporting and encouraging me. So the first question is, what is CSS? The full form of CSS is cascading style sheets. It is a way, it is a simple styling language and a very simple way to tell how our elements, how our HTML page template should look like. And this is the look and feel of the application. So your CSS defines the look and feel of the application. In how many ways CSS can be integrated in a web page? So CSS can be integrated mainly three ways. Inline styling, embedded, which is putting style tag into the uh, code directly in the head section. And last is to import or link through style SRC source. So we that is how you link the external file. Now, these are the three ways that we can incorporate CSS into our application. Now, this is an important question nowadays in all interviews, which is, what do you mean by RWD, which is RWD stands for responsive web design. This is a technique used to display the design page perfectly on any screen size and any device, namely mobile, tablet, desktop and laptop. So we don't need to create individual screens for each device. Instead, our application will automatically resolve and based on the resolution of the devices, it will adjust and the look and feel will be automatically created. So you don't have to create four different versions. What does CSS selectors mean? A simple select, so a string equivalent of HTML elements. So think of it like this. You, you assign a class CSS, class names, you assign IDs. So that is how uh, you refer to elements. Now that is a CSS selector that is using dot operator, using, using hash operator. So we target a certain element and specify the styling that we want using CSS selectors. We can, there are complex ways of defining CSS selectors. You can use arrow uh, greater than sign and target the inner child elements. But if you want to explain the most basic ones, you should start with dot operator and hash operator. All right. Now next, go to the next one. What is pseudo elements? Now pseudo elements are used to add special effects on some CSS selectors. Uh, this is nothing but an extension to applying the CSS styles. For example, think of it like this. When you use colon colon, you can put hover, you can put uh, selected, right? So you can, you can use different uh, CSS selectors. So those are called pseudo elements. Now, what is CSS box model and what are its element? So box model is nothing but using how we define the page layout and how we define the look and feel of the layout of our page that is called the box model. Now it is achieved using margin, border, padding, and finally the content in the, in the main section. So think of it like a rectangle box. That's your box. It has margin, it has padding, it has border and finally it will have some content inside the box. What is CSS float property? Now by default, any HTML DIV goes, occupies width as 100%. So in order to have multiple elements in the same line, we will use float property. So using float property, we can say how many elements do we want in the same line? It's a very, very important aspect because all the grids are des designed using the float property. Even if you're not aware, it's using float property. 
then that's that's the uh, float property so when you say float left it goes towards left when you say float right it will go towards right so you can specify the direction on which the element or the tag should be aligned explain clear property of css so in the previous question we learned about float how do we float elements now whenever you float element remember that whatever comes after that whatever elements follow will also start going in the same direction so if you say something as float left the following will also come in the same direction to stop that behavior so that it goes naturally from there on we'll use clear property so we can specify the side we can say clear left clear right or we can say clear both what is z index how does z index work so z index is nothing but it specifies on top of it so for example if overlapping right overlapping may occur while using css for positioning html elements so z index helps in specifying the overlapping element it's a number which can be positive or negative the default value being zero so if you say something like z index minus one now it will be on top of the other element that you are trying to position so if you want something on top of an element you will use z index minus one so why is it that import is always at the top top preference so it's it's used at the top of the importing the style is because we want to avoid any unnecessary overwriting so when you use import it will first import all the required styles and then apply any custom styles that we have defined in our custom css or in our template so that's the reason why we always put the import statement at the top now that is standard practice uh, based on all the programming languages that you would have seen uh, it's a good practice also so you can have some certainty and not uncertainty so what are the different css frameworks you have worked with this is another question they are interested in knowing how many um, frameworks have you worked with and what is your experience about so you can list some of the things like bootstrap foundation semantic ui and then ui kit you have material design so you can list all the frameworks that you have used in the past or refer to this list so what are universal selectors now universal selector we learned about um, having css selectors which is nothing but specifying some css style attributes like class or id and then using dot or hash operators similarly when we say universal selector it applies to to any matches of the element name so for example in the example here we have put star color green font size 20 so all the elements will now be color green and the font size will be 20 pixel that is how it will apply so universal selector matches the name of any of the element type instead of selecting elements of a specific type so it can apply if you want certain specific ones you can give only that tag name or template name what is the use of rule set what is rule set in css how do we use it so rule set is used to identify that selectors can be attached with other selectors so we can define a css rule set and indicate what is the block that we want to use and how we want to use so we can set inside inside a div we want to find a link we can do that kind of rule set and set and specify the targets what are the benefits of css sprites so css sprites are when you have multiple images that you want to use in the application but you don't want to download a large number of files right so there you'll use css sprites so for example if your page is using too many images which are taking too long time to download you can simply use css sprites so that will reduce the loading time of the web page because it combines the various small images into one big image which is downloaded only once it also helps in reducing the number of http requests and hence the loading time in general now 
this is yet another important uh, question that is frequently asked to test your knowledge so they'll ask you what is the difference between display and visibility hidden <clears throat> so visibility is nothing but the element is not displayed on the screen but it occupies the space which means whenever you say something as visibility hidden it will always have the space but the element is not displayed the element is present but is not displayed whereas in display none the element is believed that it is not there in the page itself so which means the space will not be occupied and the effect uh, of the layout it will not affect the layout so it will not fix it you can always move around the elements using display none display block what is the use use of css opacity so css opacity property is used to set the transparency of an element so let's say image on mouse over or something like that you can always have opacity less and then increase it on mouse over so that specifies the clarity of the image so you can range from 0.1 to 1 that is the values that opacity can take okay all right so that brings us to the top 15 questions of css3 and i hope uh, this was helpful and useful to you uh, i'm sure um, if you have any questions or doubts please drop them in the comment section and i'll be happy to help you for free before we leave friends please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep supporting and encouraging me if you like this video please like share comment i look forward to bringing you more tutorials thank you so much for joining see you on the next side